Hi, this is Mark Brown with Game Maker's Toolkit, a series on video game design. Infinifactory is one of the funniest games I've played this year, which is pretty impressive considering the fact that it's not really a comedy game. To get the joke, you need to know how the game works. In each level, you must fabricate some complicated structure, like this five-piece cross thing, by building a production line that transports and manipulates blocks that plop out of a hole in the wall. You build your machine with chunky cubic blocks like conveyor belts, pushers, optical sensors, rotators and welders. After spending an hour carefully building a machine to forge that five-piece cross, I finally got it to work. But Infinifactory wants you to make 10 perfect copies of the structure to prove that your machine is actually a functioning production line. So I let the machine run a few more times, confident that it would spit out 9 more perfect crosses. And then this happened. The sheer absurdity of it, the insane comic timing, the slack jaw disbelief of how stupidly crap my monstrously complicated machine was, it had me doubled over in stitches laughing at it. It was either that or cry. The opportunity for impromptu comedy is not the only thing that sets the games of Zach Barth apart from other puzzlers. In fact, they feel so fundamentally different that to put a game like Infinifactory in the same puzzle genre as games such as The Talos Principle and Snakebird might be doing it a great disservice. Because when you play Portal, you're trying to discover the solution to the puzzle, whereas in Infinifactory you are literally inventing a solution. And the use of the and A in that sentence is important because typical puzzle games have just one answer. Maybe there's a couple alternative solutions or you could tweak the main answer slightly or there is a solution that the developer never intended. But in Infinifactory, the possible solutions are infinite. Well, sort of. There's a lot of them, at least. Which is shown very clearly in these end-of-level histograms that show how efficient your solution is compared to every other player on Steam in both your use of time and space. That also sets Bath's games apart from other puzzlers. It's practically pointless to play the same puzzle twice in The Swapper, but it's genuinely enjoyable to return to a completed Infinifactory puzzle and try to make your solution more productive. So maybe we should stop saying these games are about solving puzzles and say they're actually about solving problems. These are games where you have a goal, some materials, a limited workspace and some tools. Your job is to reach that goal in any way you can. That is why these games feel less like unravelling contrived riddles, and more like solving real-world problems. Like making production lines in Infinifactory, plotting efficient train lines in Mini Metro, making spaceships in Kerbal Space Program, or writing code in Spacechem. Yeah, Spacechem has actually got way more to do with coding than chemistry, right down to the logic gates and subroutines and debugging. And that's cool for two reasons. One, programming is basically the best puzzle game in the world because it's truly open-ended and it's wonderfully satisfying to dream up, jot down, iterate upon and execute some totally unique solution to the overwhelmingly complex problem at hand. And two, it means that the game and those like it can be truly educational without being educational games. Space Chem was actually used in a few schools in the UK, according to the trade association Tiger. Similarly, Minecraft's Redstone, a mineral that lets players wire up mechanised contraptions, is introducing tons of players to simple coding. Or not so simple, Minecrafters have used Redstone to make a calculator, a GPU that can draw shapes, and an 8-track sequencer that can belt out Pakel Bell's Canon in D. By the way, Zach Barth also made the blocky competitive mining game Infiniminer that would directly influence Minecraft, so he probably dies a little inside every time you say that Infinifactory controls like Minecraft. Just a heads up. His other games, if you want to search them out, are also notable problem solvers. That includes games like The Codex of Alchemical Engineering, which is about programming commands into rotating arms to transfer imaginary minerals. Bureau of Steam Engineering, which is about connecting up boilers to steam-powered weapons on a robot, and Koktepiktopf, Engineer of the People, which is an almost impenetrable game about designing integrated circuits to meet specifications. And in the new game from his studio Zactronics, which is called TIS-100, you literally write simple assembly code into these blocks to manipulate data. You're even encouraged to print out a PDF reference manual with all the commands and instructions that you need. 
this seems to be part of a trend of programmers making games about programming. In 2D Boy's next game, Human Resource Machine, you write commands for office workers so they can automatically complete jobs. And in Quadrilateral Cowboy by Blendo Games, you write commands into a DOS-like interface to shut off alarms and unlock doors so you can break into highly secure buildings. The point is that if you play any of these games, you'll clearly see that by taking inspiration from real-world problems like programming or engineering, games like Space Chem and World of Goo can actually be more fun than those built from arbitrary puzzles. You get the satisfaction of making something work and the comedy of making something that doesn't. The same problems can be played multiple times as you try to make a more efficient solution. And it might be easier to make the levels themselves. In a post-mortem on Space Chem, Bath revealed that his puzzle creation process was essentially to throw together interesting inputs and outputs, make sure the puzzles can be solved, and then reorder all the levels based on difficulty. Don't take this as me saying that I want to bin traditional puzzle games. The Witness, for example, is one of my most anticipated games at the moment. Take it more as a friendly reminder that this is still a small, burgeoning group of games and there are still loads of real-world problems to take inspiration from in your new, open-ended, problem-solving game. Thanks for watching. Let me know your favourite problem-solving puzzler in the comments. Also, please like the episode, consider kicking in a few bucks a show on Patreon, and if you want to know the second a new episode is out, subscribe to the channel on YouTube.